Hello YouTube, let's do a Robin Hood portfolio video right now. The portfolio is sitting at $15,390. Today I am up $223, a 1 percentage gain, and after hours I am down 0.02%. So the, today I was looking, looking at was very, very bullish. Um, you can see my graph chart here is kind of just spiked all the way up. There's barely any dips. I think the NASDAQ had a really good day today. I think it was up some 120 points. It was absolutely incredible for a lot of tech stocks out there, Amazon, Microsoft, um, I think a video was up some eight dollars. Um, a lot of tech stocks, guys. Micro, uh, I think I said Microsoft already. Um, I think Activision looked good. Um, a lot of tech stocks. A lot of tech stocks was doing very good. But we're gonna talk about my portfolio, guys. Uh, let's take a look at some of the stats. Um, the market was extremely flat last week. Um, a lot of dips. Um, Dow Jones got um, hit really bad. <coughs> Excuse me, last week. I know Boeing today, they took a massive dip today. I think they was down some $38 last time I looked, but um, it had something to do with one of their planes crashing or something like that again, and this has been a trend. This has been a common trend for Boeing. Um, I think two planes in the last, like since the last year have crashed, and a lot of investors are, or, you know, a lot of investors are concerned about that. So um, for the week, I am down $52. For the month, I am still up 2%, almost 3%, $431. Let's take a look at the year graph. I'm only up $315, but we can see quite a bit of volatility right here. This is when the market was just tanking really bad, guys. And then we hit that December period where the market absolutely just collapsed on its face. So um, all the time, I am up 5%, almost 6%. So that's not really good to see that I'm sort of just rebounding here. And we're going to talk about my portfolio. There have been a lot of changes with this portfolio, guys. You know, I do... Um, you know, read you guys' comments when I, I try to do it when I have time. Um, I try to reply back to everyone um, as much as I can, but I do read you guys' comments. And you know, there's been a lot of um, people saying, "Hey, you know, why don't you uh, buy some regular companies?" You know, the ETFs look good, and you know, an all ETF portfolio is, is good. But you know, get some regular companies in there. Um, you, um, you're kind of uh, wasting your potential if by not owning some really good companies and your returns are going to be going to be flat. So after um, reevaluating the portfolio and, you know, just reevaluate what I've been doing, um, I have decided to liquidate dividend portfolio D. So, guys, um, my M1 Finance portfolio, M1, uh, dividend portfolio D is no longer a thing. I liquidated all my stocks today. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I plan on using that a thousand dollars to either. I think I, I still have to do my taxes, so I'm gonna probably do my taxes and just use that if I owe back any money, or just put it back into the Robin Hood portfolio and buy more stocks. But enough of that, enough chatter, guys. Let's get to it. Let's kind of quickly take a look at uh, ticker symbol VTI Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF. Right now, it's up uh, $143. Uh, today, it's up 1%, so a really good day today for VTI. Uh, the markets were extremely flat last week, guys, but um, it seems like a really good Monday. Um, I still haven't sold anything. 50 shares, um, 121 average cost, and I am still up $1,000 on the stock. So, um, this, <coughs> excuse me, this dividend, excuse me, this dividend, uh, this um, ETF, it will be paying a dividend soon. I do not know what the dividend uh, uh, price is going to be. I don't know if it's going to be like 72 cents. I don't know if it's going to be like 50 cents or something like that. But for 50 shares, guys, um, I'm going to get paid pretty well from VTI, and I'm up $1,000. So we talk about compound investing. We talk about uh, you know getting paid for doing as little as possible, and I am up really big on the ETF. I'm up $1,000. So um, you got to hold, guys. You got to buy and hold it and leave it alone. You know, I'm probably not going to touch this for another, you know, two years or something like that. And who knows what the price would be? The price can go back down to 121 or the price can go to like $200. But uh, Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF, um, Warren Buffett likes the S&P 500. He's uh, recommended that you invest in the S&P 500. And it's a really good index. Um, it really holds some really good companies. Uh, up a grand on this guy, 17%. So not bad, not not um, totally not bad to see there. A uh, swab U.S. dividend equity ETF at $51. Um, right now, it's at 50 shares. Nothing was sold. Average cost $50.36. Total return today $36. So a really good day for SCHD. It tends to uh, follow the Dow Jones a lot because of those industrials and those consumer staple stocks. A lot of industrials and consumer staple stocks in this ETF that pays a zero. 0. 
excuse me, a 0 0.07 uh, expense ratio. So um, really low expense uh, fees with the ETFs. And I'm sort of uh, limiting the, uh, the ETFs in my portfolio. I sold, um, I think it was PowerShares QQQ. And I think I may have sold another ETF. I think it was like VXUS. But um, <clears throat> the reason why I'm selling uh, some of these ETFs is because, again, guys, the expense ratio. So guys, look up what the expense ratio is for holding an ETF because it can really dig into your returns if you're not careful with, uh, you know, buying all these ETFs and having an all ETF portfolio at the end of the year, you will pay an expense ratio. So, um, you know, for, again, for every $10,000 that I invest into the SCHD, I would be paying $7 per year. And $7 may not seem a lot, but over time, that will add up. That will add up a lot and it will eat into your return. So uh, just be careful with these ETFs. They're very diversified. I do like them. I've I'm right now, I think I only have like three ETFs in the Robinhood portfolio, and these are the three ETFs that I like the most. So um, we're going to just go quickly talk about the other ETF. I want you guys to look at my portfolio and see that I only have three ETFs. PowerShares S&P 500 High Dividend ETF. Um, I have 100 shares of this ETF, uh, portfolio diversity at 27%. So uh, my ETF uh, exposure is quite high, but again, I'd like to be diversified. Uh, I do like capital appreciation, which I am getting with SPHD. Total return of $354. It does pay a dividend. It does pay a monthly dividend. Dividend yield is sitting around 4%. I do think that's actually accurate with the Robinhood portfolio. But you guys can see what um, that dividend is kicking in um, right here. Uh, $14.26 paid at uh, February 28th. So uh, quite remarkable to see that the dividends are you know contributing to the portfolio. And you guys can see another dividend paid uh, January 31st, 2019, $10. So there's a lot of compound investing going on and capital appreciation going on with SPHD. And it's going to pay again um, this month. And I'm not sure how much it's going to pay for it. Probably pay about 13 another $13 to $14. So if we do a lot of compound investing or you know, just hold this ETF for a long time, that money does add up a lot. And, you know, $14 here, $14 there. And, you know, it's really good to see. You can do a lot with that money. You can, uh, at, over time, you can probably buy a share of Verizon or a share of, you know, of AT&T. AT&T is looking pretty flat right now. I think it got it down to $29. But a lot of things you can do with passive income. So... Um, pretty good to see there. Uh, you guys can kind of tell that I've, I've been putting regular stocks back into a portfolio. So this is something that I talked about earlier about um, sort of just mixing ETFs with stocks. And, you know, I, I have been listening to you guys. I've been I'm reading the comments. And um, after evaluating the portfolio, I did start putting some regular stocks back into the portfolio. So let's quickly take a look at some of the stocks that I put inside the portfolio. Apple had a really good day today. Again, the NASDAQ was on fire today. Um, I think Apple got upgraded by Bank of America today, and that's the reason why they're, they're up right now. They're looking pretty good. Let's take a look at my average cost, $72, three shares. I didn't go all in on this company because I do have some of it in my M1 Finance portfolio. Um, equity, uh, just over uh, $538. Uh, portfolio diversity looks good, 3%. Uh, pretty good buy. Uh, it looks like I bought on time because it just got upgraded by Bank of America. And I, I do think Apple was still quite undervalued, especially with that P.E. ratio sitting at just 14 uh, 14 uh, percent. So a uh, dividend yield is uh, at, uh, I don't not sure if that's accurate or not, but um, Apple is one of the better companies of uh, the one of the better t tech companies that I like that on the market that is still to me a really good um a really good buy even at these prices i still think apple's a good buy got up to some 230 dollars guys and they have been um you know dividend it's not dividend split but it has been um share splitting over the last couple of years i think uh I, I forgot when the last uh share split happened I mean, maybe it was some 2013 or something like that but i think apple was like some 500 dollars or something like that uh yeah, Apple, pretty good company. Um, this is no use, no explanation. I, I know you guys, you guys already know I love Apple. I love a lot of Apple. Warren Buffett loves Apple. Um, it's a good company. Um, I like Microsoft too, but Apple's valuation right now is incredibly attractive to me. Uh, Tesla, um, at, sitting at two ninety. This is a really weird buy for me because, um, you know, I, at first I was not a big fan of Tesla. I was, I, I hated Tesla, and the reason why I hated Tesla is because it trades like a penny stock. Look at this volatility. This is a lot of volatility, guys. Look at this. This is up and down, up and down, up and down. And I kept saying to myself, "Where's the growth with this company? How is this company profitable?" Well. The reason why I bought Tesla is because 
I, I don't know. I just like what they're doing right now. Um, you know, I do follow Elon Musk on his Twitter account. Uh, excuse me. I, I do follow Elon Musk on Twitter. And um, I only bought one share. Average cost two eighty six. I'm up four dollars. But Tesla. Um, so let, let, I want to talk about why, quickly why I bought Tesla. Um, the, th- the reason why I bought Tesla is because their earnings reports are getting better. Um, this company was not profitable at all. It was very questionable. I was looking at some of their earnings reports these last couple of um, um, quarters, and I'm like, man, they're still in negative earnings. So you know, this stock it, does the stock can this stock make any money? Or are they profitable? And they showed in quarter three that they are. They did beat estimate. Um, they really crushed estimates in that third quarter. But um, it seems like they're getting they're becoming more profitable. Um, I believe in the electric car. I I believe in the electric vehicle. I think that that's going to be the future. I think that um, they're way ahead of the game. They're headed. Uh, they're he- ahead of Ford. They're ahead of uh, General Motors, and I think the electric car is going to be a thing of the future. Um, we're going to definitely try to cut down on carbon dioxide. Um, we can see quite the volatility right there. It was two ninety dollars. Now it's two eighty nine. But um, the electric vehicle is something that I, that I really believe in, and that's the reason why I bought Tesla. There's many reasons why I bought Tesla. Um, you know, I Elon Musk for you know this guy. A lot of people don't like this guy because of his antics. Um, you know, the whole smoking pot and um, you know just doing all this crazy stuff. With the the SEC got on his case. They're talking about removing him from, from power and all this sort of stuff. But a lot of his ideals I like. I, I I like what I like what he what he brings to the t- his thought process about this whole you know colonization and Mars. I'm a big space guy, guys. I love NASA. You know, I follow NASA. I follow their Twitter account, and uh, you know, I just want to see what's out there. You know, what's what's really out there? What, how are we going to get to Mars? How are we going to colonize Mars? And uh, you know, Elon Musk. He's always talking about this stuff. He's always talking about you know becoming a multi planetary species, and we got to colonize Mars. We got to get the Venus and set up, uh, you know, you know, even though Venus, he'll probably just kill you just by getting near the planet. The tremendous pressure from Venus is just absolutely incredible. You can, you, you will not be able to walk on the surface of Venus. You'll not only will you melt, but you will probably get crushed. But uh, that's enough of, about speaking about planets and stuff. But it, again, Elon Musk has a vision, and he has a vision that I do agree with. So um, Tesla, they do a lot of stuff. They do. They sell electric vehicles. They sell solar panels. I, I just think that they are the future. They 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 have a niche in the game as far as uh, being ahead of everyone else to, of uh, was of improvising of trying to uh, you know start stuff and be like one of the innovators of that technology. So that's the reason why I bought them. Um, I know it's quite a lengthy exp- explanation, guys. I'm sorry about that. I really want to just run through this portfolio um, and you know talk about what I've bought. Uh, let's get to the next stock, guys. Walgreens uh, ticker symbol WBA at sixty dollars. I didn't buy them. I got bought 10 shares of Walgreens. Uh, the reason why I bought Walgreens is because they're undervalued, guys. Um, the 52-week low was just at 59. I think this is definitely an overreaction. Walgreens is everywhere, and I talked about these companies that are all in your face. The Walmarts of the world, the Targets of the world, the McDonald's of the world. They're all in your face, and uh, people need health care. People need uh, you know drugs and to, to keep going and um, you know, the pharmacy, the Walgreens pharmacy, I, I like CVS a lot too. I'm probably going to add more to them in my M1 finance portfolio. But um, Walgreens was definitely a good buy. I think that they are definitely the right play here. I know CVS pharmacy and Aetna is trying to um, build something. They're, they um, are trying to build a clinic for CVS. They're, they're, I think CVS, I was looking at their uh, uh, what they're trying to do. So Aetna, uh, they they're taking on a lot of debt, guys. They're taking on, uh, taking on a lot of debt with this Aetna plan, and a lot of investors um, they over they sold. They they don't like uh, the future that has with uh, CVS Corporation. They're gonna uh, you know attribute a lot of debt. It's gonna be pretty bad. So, but that, that, I guess that's the reason why they took a dip. They must have had an earnings report that not look very good. But I think they're a pretty good buy at these prices, guys. And I think this is at a, at a five year low, and they pay like a four percent dividend yield. That dividend yield is not correct. It's around four percent. So um, the reason why I bought Walgreens though 
was um, because Walgreens is a dividend aristocrat. They have been increasing their dividend, unlike CVS Pharmacy, which seems to kind of stagnant as of late with their dividend. And with the acquisition of uh, what they're trying to um, attain Aetna, they're going to like sort of do a merger or something like that. But with Aetna, they're not going to be increasing that dividend for a long time. There's going to be a lot of debt with that company. So Walgreens is a proven dividend aristocrat. And, um, you know, I'm, it, it, this is a steal uh, to me. This is a, a pretty much still. I'm getting a, an above average company that's at a 52 week low and you know they're a retail giant they're a healthcare giant and they pay a, a, around a three percent four percent dividend it needs no explanation guys i i went all in on this company i bought 10 shares i probably should have bought more shares than that maybe should have probably bought 20 shares but walgreens um this is a company that i have been watching for a while i know the graph is a uh, pretty a bad indicator in the past five years they have not been growing actually down 20 percent the f- these last five years but i do think that they have a very solid support level at this at these prices i could you can see right here july uh, 2000 uh, july june 29 2018 got down to 60 dollars uh it's kind of Get then in that little dip there, sixty four dollars at October twenty seventh, two thousand seventeen. So I can't really get to scroll over there, but uh, yeah, the support level does seem to be around sixty dollars. And you know, Walgreens is an above average company; they are a dividend aristocrat. Um, guys, that's gonna do it. I have been I have been putting regular stocks back into the portfolio today. The portfolio is up massively, two hundred and twenty three dollars. You can actually tell by my watch list. I'm getting ready to put in more stocks back into the portfolio. So I'm outlining a 10 stock strategy. Again, guys, I'm going to put more stocks into the portfolio. Verizon is a stock that I like. I really like them a lot. I like them more than AT&T, but AT&T is very attractive right now. I think they're still at $29, possibly $30 thanks to the huge jump today. Um, yeah, they are at $30, but I still think AT&T is a pretty good buy, um, especially with the Time Warner merger. I think that's going to help them out a lot as far as competition uh, going down the road. But I like Verizon, guys. Um, Verizon, um, they uh, their balance sheet isn't what it once was, but I do believe that their balance sheet is still a force to be reckon, reckon with. And uh, dividend, they pay just as a, a much better dividend than uh, AT&T, even though AT&T shares are um, much cheaper. Um, this company is more expensive than AT&T for a reason because um, they just manage better, I guess. But um, I think AT&T with the merger with Time Warner, that's definitely going to give them a leg up on Verizon in the near future. But w- w- once Verizon dips, I'm probably going to go all in, guys. That's going to do it, guys. I know there's been a lot of talking. I really tried to make this video as um, short as possible, but I kind of got carried away with uh, explaining why I bought Tesla and Walgreens. Um, Apple needs no explanation. I know a lot of people like them, and I still, I'm still holding on to my high-dividend ETFs. Again, guys, it's going to do it. Um, $15,390 portfolio. Let's see if we can get this portfolio up to about 16000 probably by the end of the month. Um, I'm not sure if I will be able to do that because I'm still sort of ironing things out. But Dividend Portfolio D, guys, is no longer a thing. M1 Finance Dividend Portfolio D has been liquidated, and I don't know what I'm going to do with that extra $1,000, but we'll see. That's going to do it, guys, and I'll see you next time.